All right, let's go ahead and let's start with the story. The title of the story is Mysterious Oceans. It is an expository text, as you can see right here. All right. And uh, the essential question, remember the essential question, how are living things adapted to their environment? Okay, we're going to read about the adaptation of sea creatures in the deep ocean. So I'm going to need some volunteers to go ahead and read the first paragraph. And I'm just kidding. I know you guys are all at home, as am I. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Follow along as I read, starting with the first paragraph titled Deep Diving. It has no mouth eyes or stomach. Its soft body is encased in a white cylinder and topped with a red plume. It can grow to be eight feet tall. If a sea creature known as a giant tube it is a sea creature known as a giant tube worm and it lives without any sunlight on the deep dark ocean floor. What we sometimes call the deep ocean in contrast to shallow waters covers almost two thirds of Earth's surface. On average oceans are about two miles deep. However, the deepest point known on Earth, Challenger Deep, descends nearly seven miles. The ocean's floor is varied, consisting of vast plains, steep canyons, and towering mountains. It includes active, dormant, and extinct volcanoes. This undersea world is a harsh environment because of its frigid temperatures and lack of sunshine. The deep ocean is also a mysterious environment that remains largely unexplored. Little is known about it or its creatures. Do any of them cache food the way land animals do? Do any ocean species hibernate? As one example, among countless mysteries, not a single live giant squid had ever been spotted until a few years ago. We knew they existed only because their corpses had been found. And it points to the picture here. The caption says, Some ocean fish are swimming among tube worms. New ocean species are being discovered all the time. So that looks like that's a fish... With two worms, I don't know if that's the fish or if that's the two worm. That kind of looks like a two worm to me. Either way, it's pretty gross. It says the Challenger Deep is located in an undersea canyon. Let me zoom in a little bit. In an undersea canyon called the Mariana Trench. And you see here in the black, that's the Mariana Trench. And then right here is Challenger Deep, which it says descends nearly seven miles. All right, let's go to the next page. Amazing adaptation. So before we read that, let's go and look at the caption. It says this fish, the striated frogfish, I believe that's how you say that, lures prey. Um, all right, let me zoom out. Sorry about that, guys. The fish, the striated frogfish, lures prey. The nose is an adaptation to life in the deep ocean. A basket starfish rests in a deep sea coral reef. So that's a basket starfish. Amazing adaptations. When a submersible, oh, can't seem to move here. There we go. When a, sum, a submersible or submarine was invented that could descend farther than any other craft, scientists were then able to make the Odyssey to the deep ocean floor. Another word for Odyssey is journey, ladies and gentlemen. However, exploration remains difficult, and they have seen, or since seen, merely five percent of the underwater world. As scientists anticipated, life generally seems sparse at the bottom of the deep ocean. Few creatures can survive there. Food sources that the sea creatures, de that sea creatures depend on, such as dead plants and animals, rarely drift down from the ocean surface. As a result, animals have to adapt to an environment that is not only frigid and dark, but has, also has little food. One example of an adaptation to this environment is seen in the starfish. Deep sea starfish grow larger and more aggressive than their shallow water relatives. They can't afford to wait for an occasional snail to pass by. Instead, deep sea starfish are predators that actively forage for food. They reach up their five arms, which have pincers at the ends, to catch meals of agile, fast-moving shrimp. Uh, I would ask you guys um, if you want to YouTube a deep sea starfish and also... I would YouTube uh, live giant squid, see what you guys can come up with. I'd love to see um, anything that you guys can come up with. You can feel free to email me. Anglerfish are also adapted to their Herculean task of finding scarce food. Herculean means um, it's a great task. It's an enormous task. Each has a bioluminous or naturally glowing lure on the top of its head. The shining pool is sensitive to vibrations and allows them to attract other fish. 
With their huge jaws, they quickly seize their prey. Heated habitats. What has truly surprised... Oh, hang on a second, guys. Let's see what I can do here. What has truly surprised scientists, however, is the discovery of another very different type of environment on the deep ocean floor. They found that cracks or vents in Earth's surface exist underwater, just as they do on dry land. Seawater rushes into these vents where it mingles with chemicals. The water is also heated by magma, or hot melted rock. When the water from the vent bursts back into the ocean, it creates geysers and hot springs. To scientists' amazement, the habitats around these vents teem with life. In addition to tube worms, there are huge clams, eyeless shrimp, crabs and mussels, along with many kinds of bacteria. One odd creature is the Pompeii worm. It has a fleece of bacteria on its back that, as far as scientists can determine, insulates it from heat. So it has bacteria that it kind of wears like a jacket around its back to keep it warm, as far as scientists know. It might be for another reason, but no one knows. How can so much life exist when there is so little food or sunlight? Let me see if I can move this a little bit. All right, there we go. Scientists have discovered that many creatures transform the chemicals from the vents into food. The process is called chemosynthesis. Because of this process, animals are able to flourish in these remarkable habitats. Creatures that don't use chemosynthesis for food, such as crabs, eat the ones that do. There are many mysteries to be found and solved at the bottom of the deep sea. In the last few decades alone, scientists have discovered more than 1,500 ocean species. If scientists continue sea exploration, they are bound to discover many more. All right. So here's mussels, worms, and spider crabs that live near heated vents. It says, talk about the way some sea creatures adapt to the deep ocean. So I would look at the Pompeii worm, look at the basket starfish. Compare one sea creature adaptation to that of another animal you have seen. It doesn't have to be an animal that we learned about today. It could be another animal that you've seen. All right. If you need to pause so you can read this or look at it closely or take a screenshot, whatever you need to do, go ahead and do that now. All right. I'm going to go to the previous page. If we want to um, pause, take a screenshot. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. If I zoom in. All right. Let me see if I can zoom in so you guys can take a screenshot. All right. All right. And I'll go back to the other page real quick. If you want to take a screenshot of this one, I don't think I can. Can I adjust this? Hmm. All right, there's one, and let's see if I can get two. There's, oh, it looks like. There is the second one, I think. There we go. So you can take a screenshot of those pages if you need to. I've zoomed them in as best I can. Thank you for being patient, you guys. That's the story. We're going to get with the other parts of it. Um, we're going to learn about, let's see, ask and answer questions, cause and effects, expository text, context clues, and that's going to be it. So we'll do that in the next video, and I'll give you guys some activities that you can do in your year turn book. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.